Hey everyone, welcome back to Holtzfelder Woodworking. My name is Alan. It's been a while. I've been busy, but I'm back now, so let's get this show on the road. First up, the lighting in my house is terrible. So I'm going to fix that by installing these low-profile LED recessed lights everywhere. The problem is the ceilings are made of cement, which means it's almost impossible to install and run the wiring. So I'm going to create a sort of coffered ceiling look with fake beams and trim all the way around. The lights will mount directly in the beams and the wiring will be hidden inside. Now I whipped up this prototype, everything seems to work just fine. So I'm going to do this in my living room, but since I don't know how it's going to look or work, I'm going to do a test run down here in my rec room first. Let's break down some MDF. My shop is just too small to run an entire sheet of MDF through the table saw, so I break it down with the track saw first. Even then, I need to position the table saw so I'm running it through the doorway. I'm using 9mm MDF for this and start by ripping the base pieces for the center beams at around 11 centimeters wide. Then, the bases for the outside trim pieces at 3 cents, and lastly, the sides for all the pieces at two and a half centimeters. I cut a couple of spares for each in case I make a mistake, which I will. Next up is a whole lot of glue and some 15 mil brad nails to hold it all in place. I use the shortest nails I can to avoid splitting the MDF. The nails are just there to keep everything in place until the glue dries. I fill all the holes with some putty, let it dry and then a light sanding so we won't see them once it's painted. I apply a couple of coats of white before install, even though I'm going to need to do a finish coat once they're up. It's much easier to paint them down here on the ground. I'm starting with the outside trim channels first. I need to mark the ceiling for the exact location of the holes I pre-drilled in the trim, then remove that trim so I can drill and then insert the anchors. Once that is done, the trim piece goes back up and I screw it into place, hoping that I drilled the holes accurately. I do have enough practice at this by now that they are all perfect. Okay, look at that. Worked my way all around the trim, cut a 45 and a number of 22.5s. Uh, got that all done. As you can see, there's a few gaps. This is the basement, however, so I expected that to happen, and uh, we'll deal with that with some caulking later. Next up, we're going to install the big beam center pieces that are going to go right across and actually hold the lights. Going to be the same kind of process, drill some holes, put some, hold them up, put some marks in, pull it down, and actually then drill in for the anchors and reinstall. I square off the ends of the beams to make sure we get a nice flush 90. I want these beams to be as low profile as possible. The lights themselves need a 3 centimeter clearance, so I'm going to cut a recess in each of the beams to accept the back of the lights. This allows me to shave about 8 mils off the profile of the beam. The lights require a hole 95 millimeters in diameter, so I'll just use the same hole saw to cut the recesses, as well as the access holes for the electricity. I like to tack these on with one screw to hold it firm on the one end, while my lovely wife holds the other in place. This lets me measure a perfect 90 and accurately mark for the remaining anchors. For this, I use an old drill bit to mark out where those anchors need to go. Next, I drill a hole to allow for the wiring that's going to connect the light by the door. Then, I run the wire for the remaining five lights. 
held into place by these little zip tie thingamajigs. With that in place, I start ripping the caps for the beams. I use a cutoff piece of the beam to set the fence, then back it off a couple of mils to make sure I get full side to side coverage on the beam. For this, I'm gonna use five mil HDF. That five mil plus the two and a half centimeter sides are gonna give us the three centimeters clearance that we need. Then I cut the holes for the actual light installation. The recesses needed to be in the ballpark, but I want these to be perfectly centered since we're gonna see these lights. A quick couple of coats of paint to save us some hassle later. Then more glue and the same 15 mil brad nails to tack into place. Time to wire up the lights. I actually checked them before I secured the caps. I just forgot to film that part. I'm not an electrician, so please govern yourself accordingly. Okay, the caps are on all the beams, the lights are installed, and they work, which is nice. Uh, as you can see, this area here is missing. There's one up on this beam as well. I'm gonna cover those with these. Now, the beams themselves are glued up and sealed shut, so if I ever need access in there, it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna have to tear those apart. So I don't anticipate ever needing to do that. Same with where the electricity comes out, the, the cables come out of the ceiling. I don't anticipate needing to get in there, but just in case I do, I'm gonna install these two caps with screws that will be covered and can be removed if I need them. Now this one's very simple. Uh, this one actually features a light, so I've already cut the, drilled the hole for that. So we're gonna pop those on now. Oh, and I have a photo shoot to do after this, so. I made sure to cut this tight to minimize any gaps and then just screw it into place. With those in place, it's time to cut, glue, and nail the outside trim caps into place. Pretty much the same process as with the beams. And we're done. The fun part. Uh, the initial building part is really fulfilling. You see results very quickly. Now comes the hard part, the finishing. And that means filling in all the holes from the brad nails with some Everglaze Spot Putty by Evercoat, the red stuff. Not a sponsor, yet. And filling in all the gaps with some caulk so I can paint it and it'll all look like one continuous beam. I'm not gonna waste your time filming that. You know what that looks like, right? Okay, all the holes are filled, the gaps are caulked. When I made the cap pieces for the trim on the sides, I cut them the exact same width as the channel pieces. That way, any variance, which is gonna happen with the walls doing this, can be simply addressed just with caulk, and then once it's painted, you'll never see it. However, the beam pieces are going down the middle, and we're gonna see both sides of it. Very difficult to cut the exact same size, glue it up, and then hold it over your head to, to nail it without moving it a little bit. So, this one I cut a couple mils proud, so there's a little tiny little overhang on either side, which we're gonna clean up now with a router and a flush cut bit. Now I have a very large router, which is going to be completely useless over my head here. So I borrowed a friend of mine's Makita uh, cordless router, which should do the trick in no time at all. After that, just a quick sanding, get ready for some paint. And then after that, Go and shave this off, because evidently I look like an old man. This makes a ridiculous mess. Dust everywhere. Ideally, I would have a dust collection system hooked up to it, but being inverted and above my head makes that six tenths useless. So I just clear the room completely and make sure to wear a mask. And a light sanding all around gets me ready for the final coat of paint. Okay, everything's filled, caulked, sanded, painted, ready to install. Now, what I like about these lights is they're very simple. First off, choose your color temperature. We go from a, a cool white all the way to a warm white. I'm gonna use the warm white in here. And then simply using these little spring-loaded tabs, 
is just pop them into place. Okay, with it all installed, I gotta say, pretty happy with how it turned out. Now, a lot of work to be done in this room still. Uh, I'm gonna put a new oak vinyl floor in, a entertainment center over here with a new TV and a home theater perhaps. Uh, Murphy bed in behind the camera and turn this into a proper guest room entertainment room. Now from a design perspective, I would have preferred having a true coffered ceiling with the LED lights in the middle of the panel, but considering that wasn't really an option down here, this is a very close second choice. Uh, I will be doing this in my living room upstairs. This was the test run for that and I did make a few mistakes. One of the things I did around the edge was I tried to flush it up on install instead of cutting it a little bit thicker and then trimming it with the flush cut. I figured that might be a little bit too much work, which it would be, but when I do it upstairs, I will do it that way. I'm gonna make it perfect. Down here, you don't really notice it. A few spots I will notice, but it's not the end of the world. Next time I will do a little bit better. Uh, and lastly, I was trying to get away without doing too much painting, had to cover up some of the, the edges and grabbed the wrong paint. I thought I had this exact color paint in my cabinet, uh, in my workshop. I don't, I have one that's almost the same and now we can see the edge and that's terrible. I'm gonna end up repainting the entire room anyways. Thanks for watching Holtzfeller Woodworking. Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode.